Welcome to this embryology video. In this video we're going to cover the zygote just after its formation and follow it through to the third week. So let's begin the moment after the formation of the zygote. Here we have the zygote, still encapsulated by the zona pellucida, which is the glycoprotein layer that surrounds it. About 24 hours after fertilization, the first division occurs. The zygote divides to form two cells, and these cells are called blastomeres. Following this, rapid divisions occur to about the 32 cell stage, where the cells form a solid clump called a marula, which is Latin for mulberry. This process of rapid division is called cleavage. During cleavage, the cells do not have much time to grow in between divisions, so the cells are rather small as do not have time to replenish their cytoplasm. On day four, the cells undergo compaction, which is the formation of tight and gap junctions in the cells around the edge of the marula to give structure. Outer cells, through the formation of tight and gap junctions, form an epithelial-like layer and begin to pump fluid into the middle of the solid cell ball to form a fluid-filled cavity, the blaster seal. Some cells clump at one end to form an inner cell mass. The structure looks different now, so we give it a different name. The whole thing, the blaster seal, the inner cell mass, and the uh, cells around the edge are called the blaster cyst. Flattened outer cells of the blaster cyst are called trophoblasts, and these will become the placenta and fetal membranes. The inner cell mass cells are called embryoblasts and will become the fetus. On day five, the inner cell mass forms two layers, the epiblast and the hypoblast. At the end of the fifth day, the blaster cyst hatches from inside the zona pellucida. This coincides roughly with the blaster cyst reaching the uterine cavity. Implantation occurs on the sixth day and is complex, so we will leave the details to another video. But the result of implantation is our blaster cyst embedded in the endometrium of the mother. So what now? Well, in the second week, a second cavity forms between the epiblast and the trophoblasts. This is called the amniotic cavity, and the other cavity is now called the yolk sac. The result is the formation of a disc sandwiched between two cavities. This disc is called the bilamina disc, as it has two layers, the epiblast and the hypoblast. So in the second week, this is the week of twos, the two layers of the bilamina disc and two cavities. At the beginning of week three, a visible line or streak of cells forms on the epiblast layer. So if we look down on the epiblast, like we're looking at it from the amniotic cavity, we can see this disc of epiblast cells. This streak of cells elongates along the rostral caudal line of the bilamina disc. Rostral means beak end and caudal means tail end. This is called the primitive streak and is critical. The primitive streak deepens to form a groove called the primitive groove and a pit forms at the cranial end of the primitive streak. This is called the primitive pit. The primitive pit is surrounded by a raised ring of cells and this raised ring of cells with the primitive pit is called the primitive node. Looking back at the transverse section, cells flow into the primitive groove from the epiblast and invade in between the epiblast and the hypoblast to form a third layer called the mesoderm. Now we have a trilaminar disc. The formation of the trilaminar disc is called gastrulation. These three layers now that we have will each form different tissues in the fetus and are given new names. The ectoderm is closest to the amniotic cavity and will form the epidermis and nervous system. The mesoderm will form the mesenchyme, which is muscle, connective tissue, etc. The endoderm will form the GI tract below the pharynx, the respiratory tract below the larynx, much of the urinary system and some endocrine tissues. Once the trilamina disc has formed, endoderm cells invade the mesoderm from the primitive node. 
Let's look at this longitudinally. So we've sliced the other way along the disc. The ectoderm cells tunnel from the primitive node longitudinally and cranially along the disc, like a finger sliding into a glove. This forms a hollow tube called the notochord. In humans, this only becomes the nucleus pulposus of intervertebral discs. But it is important in determining further developments such as the spine and the neural plate, which we will come on to in the next video. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.